I went to Williams College, Williamstown, Massachusetts for my undergraduate education. After I received my bachelor degree, I went to Yale University for my PhD degree. After I got my PhD degree, I went to MIT for my postdoctoral training. In November 1964, I accepted a faculty, faculty appointment as an assistant professor in the Department of Biophysics at the University of Pittsburgh. In 1967, I was promoted to associate professor. And in 1971, I was promoted to full professor at University of Pittsburgh. I stayed at Pitt until 1979. I was recruited to CMU to build a modern biology department. I was appointed as professor and head of Department of Biological Sciences in July 1979. I stayed on as department head until 1986. In 1985, we built an uh, animal center at CMU. I was appointed director. I have been in a CMU since 1979. I have two major research uh, projects in my lab. One is on the structural function relationship of a protein called hemoglobin, uh, which is responsible for transport oxygen from lungs to tissue. I've been working on the structural dynamic function of this protein for a number of years. I'm still continuing working on that. My second project is the uh, uh, a new way to track individual cells in vivo, uh, in particular tracking immune cells. And uh, it's a way to imaging immune responses. Uh, my present work is using the organ transplantation as a model to monitor immune responses in red model for organ heart transplantation. In my hemoglobin work, we've been uh, doing fair amount of work. Uh, we try to develop a way to uh, uh, prevent sickle cell uh, to do some work may have implication on treatment for sickle cell patient, which is hemoglobin, mutant hemoglobin. We've done a fair amount of work on that, and we also try to use hemoglobin that we studied for a number of years to design a uh, novel uh, hemoglobin-based oxygen carriers, which are blood substitute. The, on the imaging immune responses, uh, in our model for uh, cardiac transplantation. So we developed new way, non-invasive way to monitor um, cardiac rejection non-invasively by MRI. And hopefully we find a new way to prevent acute rejection. And if we can uh, in prevent um, acute rejection, we may be able to delay or put or uh, control chronic rejection. This would not only make improve the quality of life for heart transplant patient, but also uh, patient would not need a second transplantation because there are great shortage of donor organs. So this would allow more organs for other patients. I have uh, uh, two program hemoglobin, we have about six or seven people working. We have some graduate students at the moment. We have a re research associate, postdoc, and some laboratory assistant and some undergraduates. In the, uh, my um, cardiac transplantation work, we have about 10 people. Uh, one graduate student, uh, some postdoc, some uh, 
senior researcher, uh, been working with me for a number of years. They use all the tools that we're using in hemoglobin work. We use molecular biology, biochemistry, and uh, high resolution NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. In the organ transplantation work, we use cell biology, immunology, and magnetic resonance imaging. Well, we, we, we like in the hemoglobin work, uh, we have some very exciting new finding, which challenges uh, the dogma in the field. So we hope we have new understanding of very important protein hemoglobin, how it functions as oxygen carrier. In the case of um, organ transplantation, it's really it's a very new exciting field we have new way to monitor uh, immune cell infiltration and monitor cardiac function in the transplant rat. So our model allows us to monitor the rejection process from beginning to the end. And uh, hopefully we will find new way to monitor cardiac uh, rejection non-invasively in real time by MRI, and this could have major impact on, on monitoring tra heart transplant patients without using the conventional biopsy, which is not only invasive, but also subject to sampling error. Uh, and also maybe a new understanding on transplantation immunology. Well, we have people from Pitt, Dr. Patrick Kohanley, um, he's director of SAFA Center for Resuscitation Research. We've been using our facility for a number of years in head trauma research using rotor models. And then I also collaborate with people with the, in the um, cardiology uh, division at Pitt School of Medicine. And, uh, uh, doing uh, carry out some similar work on using PIC model for as a model for organ transplantation like we do with uh, rats. So there are people in the um, uh, Stargill Transplantation Institute we've been working with uh, for the PIC model. Generally biochemistry, biophysics, general molecular biology, proceeding National Academy of Sciences. And uh, well, we also have a paper covering in nature, nature structural biology, and uh, protein sciences, that's what we publish. And then for the uh, cardiac transplantation work, we publish in a uh, number of journal, uh, proceeding on National Academy of Sciences, uh, circulation, uh, journal, journal of American College of Cardiology, and magnetic, uh, magnetic resonance in medicine. Well, I think that they should have a basic understanding of biochemistry, uh, some biochemistry, molecular biology, and some genetic uh, in order to be successful nowadays. Well, this is a university. The, I have some graduate students from physics, and uh, the, the, in a sense, the, uh, there's not much boundary. As long as students do good work, uh, they can do just about anything they want to do. Well, we have a good facility, good people, and uh, I'm always interested in bright, dedicated young people. Well, NMR Center has been uh, in existence since 85. Um, it, was, it was formed as a joint research 
and training facility for Pitt and CMU. He has been supported by a major NIH grant for the last 23 years. So we have not only research uh, people in the biology department at uh, the public campus, CMU, using our facility, but also people from Pitt. They're using our facility for their biomedical research.